Hey everybody, um, it was a beautiful Easter weekend. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Um, I've posted the podcast uh, for this week, uh, the reading. Um, I also urge you, urge you to um, attend the SIs. Uh, I think, in fact, I'm sure that attending the SIs will help you uh, on the upcoming quizzes uh, and on the second midterm. Uh, so especially those of you that are concerned about your grades or want to pull your grades up, um, Marianne and I work very closely together. She knows exactly what it is I'm looking for uh, on my quizzes and on the midterm. So please uh, attend the SIs if possible. Now, one of the things that I'm asking you to do this week is watch the movie The Searchers. Uh, the Searchers is a movie from the mid 50s. It's a John Wayne movie. It's the director's John Ford. Uh, it's considered probably one of the top 10 or 15 movies ever made in the United States. Um, it, the story takes place in Texas, but it's filmed in Monument Valley, Utah. Uh, it, it's extremely gorgeous, uh, the movie to look at. John Wayne was an absolutely brilliant uh, film director with a beautiful eye. And what The Searchers is about, it's a fictionalized account of the, um, the kidnap kidnapping of Cynthia Ann Parker, who was a young Anglo kidnapped in the uh, uh, 1836. Uh, who married a Comanche chief um, and who later uh, was recaptured, brought back into the white world and we think starves herself to death. So The Searchers is a very loose account of the story of Cynthia Ann Parker and her uh, uncle who tried to find her. And what makes this movie so interesting besides just the, the sheer beauty of watching it is that John Wayne is a very complex figure. Usually John, Play, John Wayne characters are just, they're just 100% heroic. But one of the things that makes The Searchers kind of an enduring film and an all-time classic is that the John Wayne character, Ethan, in this movie, you don't know whether to root for him or against him. You don't know if he's a good person or if he's a bad person. Uh, his background, as you'll see, is very mysterious. He just shows up at his brother's place in Texas. Uh, he has gold coins that aren't marked, which is very mysterious. Uh, where did he get those coins that weren't marked? Uh, he's under a lot of suspicion. But at the same time, uh, the John Wayne character, Ethan, um, he understands the Comanche world. He speaks Comanche. He understands the Comanche spiritual world world. He understands how the Comanche fight. Uh, so he has insight into the Comanche, but at the same time, he truly hates the Comanche. You don't know if he wants to save his niece who has been kidnapped or, or kill her because she's uh, become Comanche. So it's a very complex uh, um, role for John Wayne and uh, a lot of critics think, and, and John Wayne himself thought that this was the greatest role that he ever played. And he had ended up naming one of his children, Ethan, um, one of his sons, Ethan, because he was so proud uh, of this role that he played, the, the complexity uh, of, of the character. Um, note a couple of things as you watch the movie, note his interactions with the, uh, the Mexican-American who helps connect him with Scar. As you'll see, Scar is the Comanche chief that's kidnapped his um, um, niece. John Ford portrays this Mexican-American in a, as a very, very dignified man at a time when most Mexican-Americans were portrayed on film uh, in horribly uh, stereotypical uh, ways, uh, racist ways. Um, also note that it, the last scene uh, with John Wayne, uh, when he comes out of the tent, what's, what's he carrying in his hand? Uh, take a look at that at, towards the very end of the movie. Uh, note the rhythms of the movie. And so I, I'm, I show you this movie just to give you some kind of sense of uh, the uh, Anglo Comanche experience. I would say the movie, if it were made today, would be somewhat controversial in its portrayal uh, of the Comanche. 
Uh, it's not completely unsympathetic, but it's not completely sympathetic either. Um, the real strength of the movie, though, is the, the portrayal of John, the John Wayne character, Ethan. Um, you, can't, you can't really figure him out. Uh, is he a hero? Uh, is he a villain? Is, is he uh, uh, sane? Is he insane? Uh, he's definitely racist in the movie. And so that's what makes this movie kind of an enduring classic that the, the, the protagonist, uh, John Wayne, who plays Ethan, uh, is a very complex character. One of the things to watch about in, in this movie, which I always really like, is there's a lot of Spanish in the movie. Uh, especially at the scene, uh, the scene where um, uh, the uh, the Mexican American, the very dignified Mexican American landowner, connects uh, Ethan with Scar, the Comanche chief who's kidnapped uh, his uh, niece Debbie. Uh, Debbie's played by Natalie Wood, the great Natalie Wood, um, and so take a look at this movie. You don't have to watch the whole thing. I. Um, I uh, put on the announcement for this week uh, what I want you to watch, which is, of course, what I want you to, uh, what I'm going to test you on. Uh, I didn't, I'm not asking you to watch the whole movie. These 1950 movies, I don't think people had a lot to do in the 1950s because we're used to kind of quick movies. Uh, this one kind of takes its time. Uh, there's a lot of scenes like at the homestead. So if you want to watch the whole movie, it's, it's, it's really beautifully shot. But I just, uh, I cut out maybe about a third of the movie. I just want to get you to the essence of it. So uh, take a look at the searchers and the, the point of this movie, it takes place in Texas. It's filmed in Monument Valley, Utah, and it speaks to the uh, savage war between Anglos and Comanches. Be beginning really when Anglos take over Texas in the 1830s and going all the way uh, to the final uh, uh, expulsion of Comanches um, into Oklahoma in the 1880s. The movie doesn't really talk about the expulsion of the Comanches, but we will in this course. So I hope you enjoy The Searchers. Uh, it's a little bit of a change of pace for the course, um, but it I, I just think it's uh, an amazing movie, a, a much more complex movie than you would expect from uh, the 1950s, especially, especially as I've said a couple of times now uh, in the portrayal of the uh, Anglo protagonist, Ethan.